I transform my office from looking like this to looking like this. As you can tell, it's definitely a huge upgrade that didn't happen overnight. It literally took months of planning, ordering, organizing, assembling, and lots and lots of coffee. I changed everything from the walls to the desk to even the smallest of things to bring everything together nicely and give me that extra motivation to work even harder right when I enter the room. And I documented the entire process for you guys. Just know that I did reach out to some companies in the hopes that they may send out some of these products, uh, but they didn't pay me to say anything. Everything in this video is still my opinion and everything I was given, I would have purchased anyways. Now the first thing I started with was clearing out everything in the room. And I mean everything. I removed all the stuff on my desk, like my phones, charging station, digital scale. Then I turned off my computer, removed my audio interface, keyboard, mat, microphone, etc. Then I unplugged everything and started tearing out all of my past cable management work that once took me hours to set up. That was fun. After shutting a tear or two, I had my brother help me remove that giant 49 inch monitor by LG. Super massive, but totally worth it for editing. Then I took out my monitor arm, which I didn't end up using, and I'll explain why later on. And finally for the desk, I had to disassemble it to get it through the door. So I unscrewed the top, took it out of the room, and then I removed the frame separately leaving nothing in the room besides the glass cabinet that carries all of my Andrew collectibles, a giant clock, a whiteboard, and this giant dirty mark in the bottom center of the wall where I rest my feet whenever I do work. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Luckily, I didn't need to paint it because I've been meaning to use some acoustic wooden wall panels. After trying out several samples, I fell in love with this one. It's from the Wood Veneer Hub, and they call it the Lux American Oak Acoustic Wide Slap Wood Wall Panels. Yeah, it's got the longest name. But I love these because not only is the material really high quality, but the wood slats are really wide. Most other wood panels have this slimmer theme, which is kind of distracting when you look at them from far away because they create this optical effect. More specifically, it's called the moray pattern. It's the same optical illusion that happens whenever you wear a striped shirt on camera. It's kind of distracting and hard to look at, so having wider slats were definitely the right move. I also tried to reach out to the wood veneer hub to see if they would be willing to help me out with my office makeover, and they said yes, sending out over six of their panels. When needing to install them, it also wasn't difficult. Uh, luckily, the walls in my office were around the same height as the panels that arrived, so I didn't need to cut them at all. We just had to push them up against the wall, make sure they lined up flat on the ceiling, and screw them in. No need to stick them with any adhesive that would damage the paint, it's perfect if you rent a place and want to spice things up, because when it's time to move, you can just unscrew them and easily take them with you to reuse at your new apartment or your new house. The only time that we did run into some difficulty was when we needed to cut squares into the two panels to make room for two outlets on the wall. Plus on the last panel, we also needed to shave off around an inch to make it perfectly fit on the wall. All of this would have been a breeze if we had an electric saw, but since we didn't own one, we needed to resort to a good old hand saw. Yeah, it was annoying, time consuming, and stressful to use, but with a bit of patience, we got the job done. It wasn't a perfectly straight line either, and I did accidentally create a few extra scuffs that I'm sure some of you may start yelling at me in the comments about. But to me, it turned out fine. Lastly, to hide the screws, I bought these dark miniature felt pads at Home Depot that fit perfectly into the middle of the slats, and from far away, you can't really see the pads unless you look closely. Overall, I'd say the entire wall turned out fantastic. Next, I had to go with a completely new standing desk because the one I had been using for over six years has been starting to fall apart. It had unremovable stains and made a really loud noise whenever it went up or down. Sometimes it would abruptly stop when I tried to higher or lower it, and the buttons were stuck barely letting me push them in. So it was definitely time for a change. And with so many options out there, it wasn't easy to choose one. That's until I found the perfect one while I was scrolling through Instagram. Secret Labs Magnus Pro XL. And there are a few reasons why this desk caught my attention. The first is that it comes with the best cable management out there. Unlike other standing desks, this one has a built-in tray to let you store away every cable. 
Even better, you can store larger items like your power strips, USB hubs, and even an entire audio interface device, and you still won't be able to see anything on the outside. The only cables you'll notice is the one for your headphones if you're not going wireless, your keyboard, and the cable connected to the desk column, which powers everything. It's way better than using a bunch of adhesive cable clips that are sure to fall off after a few weeks. Plus, that power supply on the left column is super useful because it allows for an outlet to be dropped inside the cable tray, allowing you to plug in your power strip and freeing you from needing to stress about your wires getting tugged around as the desk moves higher or lower. On top of that, the entire desk, including the top, is made out of metal, with most of it being steel, including the frame itself. So you know this thing is made to last. Secret Lab even sells these magnetic cable anchors and cable sheaths to organize any loose cables on the desk or near the table's legs. Another thing that I like about the desk is that it comes with a magnetic desk mat which overlays the entire top of the table. That way in the future when the mat starts to wear and tear, I can easily swap it out for a new one. Some of the edges on the mat don't sit completely flush on the table, but it's not a huge deal. I could go on and on about this desk, like there's an RGB light strip on the back, a magnetic headphone hanger, a PC mount, and a lot more, but there are other things that I want to get to in this video, so I'll just leave it at that. The only cons about this table though is that the RGB light strip has this flimsy connection that easily disconnects, and there's a possibility that you may not be able to use your monitor arm if you need to clamp it into the desk since the cable tray is in the way. Almost, no. That's what happened to me. So I had to use the stock stand that came with my LG monitor, and I didn't want to do this because it's not really that tall, and its legs take up a good amount of space on the table. Now Secret Lab does sell monitor arms of their own, but as of now, they don't support monitors larger than 34 inches, or ones that weigh more than 17 pounds, which is literally mine. On the positive side though, they do plan on releasing a heavy duty monitor arm, so once that drops, I'll definitely pick that up. And since my desk is Batman themed with a black top, of course I needed to switch all my tabletop accessories to a white theme. So I started with the keyboard. The base is a JMMK Pro by Glorious Gaming, a pretty awesome 75% keyboard with a knob at the top. Nothing crazy though. For the switches, I'm using Cherry Brown with custom U4T stems, uh, 65 gram springs, and I filmed them with uh, desk keys and looped them. For the keycaps, I'm using this one called DSA Milkshake because they fit that white theme perfectly while having some colorful keys to give it a bit of an accent. I've been using them for a while, so I did need to clean them. And even though I bought a black body keyboard, uh, Gloria still lets you swap out the top frame and the rotary knob with a completely different colored set. That way, you don't need to go out and buy a completely different keyboard. Makes it really easy to clean, too. I also bought their white coiled cable snapped on Secret Lab's magnetic cable anchor, and haven't looked back. From there, I mounted my Blue Yeti X microphone with a boom arm to the desk. Luckily for this, I was able to clamp the arm just fine within the desk since it wasn't that big. My headphones are this closed back over the ear headset from Maze Audio called the Lyric. I've had them for a few years and they're some of the best sounding headsets I've ever used with very accurate sound, fantastic sound isolation, and a proprietary driver technology that provides extremely accurate bass. The only problem is that after a few hours, it does get uncomfortable to use since my ears start to hurt. So for that reason, I may start looking to replace them. For my mouse, I've been using the MX Master 3, but in the black version. So I had to get the 3S, but in white to match the theme of my keyboard. After that, I wanted to get a desk shelf in white for a nice contrast. And surprisingly, there aren't that many companies out there that make good looking shelves. A lot of them make really ugly ones. The only company though that I could find that made fantastic looking ones is Grovemate. I went ahead with their large matte white sets with a desk tray. And yes, it did cost an arm and a leg, but honestly, I'm glad I went with them because I'm very pleased with the quality. It was also very easy to assemble and it fit nicely on my 70 inch black desk. I'm just disappointed that the tray isn't connected to the shelf, so whenever I pull it out, it feels unnatural and opens in random directions. For desktop speakers, I'll be honest, I never owned a pair, but I knew I wanted some that weren't too big, were white, and looked modern and sleek. So after a good amount of research, I decided to go with the Kanto U4MW, 
and I'm happy I went with them because they look and fit perfectly on the desk. They have many connection ports, sound incredible, and are a real eye catcher. Plus, with any good speaker, you need to get a good set of speaker stands, and my choice was those from Belolo. Uh, their stands are made of high quality materials, including American walnut wood for the stem and power coated steel for the plates. They also elevate and tilt the speakers perfectly towards my face, not too high or too low, just at the right level. I also added a Stream Controller X by Razer to the desk. It's a fantastic little device that lets me quickly open any of my most used apps, websites, or specific tools for certain programs that I use. I just wish it had a white model because that would have fit in perfectly with a the theme that I was trying to go for. Finally, I added a few more random things to my desk to fill in those empty spots and make my workspace more productive. I picked up this analog starter kit from Ogmonk, which makes it really easy to prioritize my most important tasks for the day. Plus I can write down any tasks that I want to complete for the month and some ideas and goals I'd like to accomplish or revisit sometime in the future. I also picked up their stainless steel scissors that balance nicely on a metal base with a strong magnet to hold it in position. Their gather phone stand to prop up my phone to let me quickly check my notifications without needing to hunch over. I even used an app called Standby Mode Pro to let me turn my phone into a smart display with a tap of a notification. I also have this desk pen and sticky notepad from Grovemade. Unfortunately, they don't sell the same exact sticky notepad anymore, but they do have something similar. And that's pretty much it for my desk. From there, I also set up my new chair called the Titan Vivo. It's also made from Secret Lab. And of course, I had to get their Dark Knight Edition to match the desk. Fun fact, it's also the same chair that Hans Zimmer uses in his studio, which is pretty gnarly. Plus, being that I'm a pretty tall guy at around 6 foot 1, I had to get their XL version, which in the end, worked out perfectly. The setup process was relatively simple with clear instructions on a giant sheet of paper. Surprisingly, even with the chair being so massive, I didn't need another person to help me out because the process was pretty easy. It's made out of leather, which feels super premium and durable. The armrests can be swapped out easily since they're magnetically attached, which is really cool. I use Secret Lab's memory foam armrest top, which I highly recommend you check out and splurge on because they're just so comfortable. Plus, a few extra features I love about the chair are that it has a lumbar support to flex your spine, a magnetic memory foam head pillow that feels like heaven, and it reclines all the way back to turn into a bed, which is perfect for those late night work sessions. Overall, it's a really fantastic chair. The only thing I would say that I don't like is that the seat base of the chair is a bit too stiff. I wish it had a bit more cushion, but other than that, it works and looks fantastic. After the chair, I got to work on some other furniture in the room. I started with this bookcase that I found off Wayfair. It wasn't super expensive, and yet the materials feel premium. It comes with these large planks of wood that aren't flimsy and are held by this open metal frame. Putting it together was a bit of a struggle, but once it was mounted on the wall, it looked incredible. It gives off this modern and space-saving feel, which is exactly what I wanted. I also put a lot of thought into what items I wanted to show off on this bookcase. Typically, people will put books on a bookcase, hence the name. But honestly, I know you guys will roast me in the comments about this, I don't really read that many books. So I instead want it to be more of an art piece. I placed some fake plants at the top because everything I touch dies. I got this overly expensive box-like clock called the Hollywood Hills. The Newton's Cradle was a Christmas gift from my brother David, so a huge shout out to him. Then I went with a really artistic, meditative object that is pretty random, but gets you saying, that thing is really cool to look at. It's called the Fluid Desk Mobile, and once I took it out of the box and set it up, I fell in love with it. It looks really cool and abstract, which I'm a huge fan of. Next, I wanted an item that does something out of the ordinary and is also cool to look at, and I found this item called Tempo Drop Storm Glass which accomplished the task. It has this liquid inside that reacts to the temperature in your room. So whenever the temperature drops, it creates these mesmerizing crystallization patterns, and it's very cool to look at. Each day it has different patterns too, so each time I enter my room, it's almost like a mystery to see what it looks like for the day. The next item I decided to go with was a digital picture frame from Skylight, so that I can make the office a bit more personal. And it worked better than I expected. It shows every picture in amazing quality, it's touchscreen so you can easily modify its settings, and it even lets other people share photos to the frame through an email or link. The only annoying thing is that some features like displaying videos or controlling the frame with your phone 
does require you to get their $4 monthly subscription, so that does kind of suck. And finally, I threw in a few more items on the shelf, including a really cool looking mushroom lamp from Etsy, a one of one custom Andrew collectible called the Shell Game, a Google bike, and some random abstract items that I purchased at a retail store. Overall, I think it looks great without being overcrowded and still looks like everything is filled in. Next to the bookcase, I wanted to put a nice colorful cabinet to give the room some accent and a fun atmosphere since most of the furniture I put in so far is pretty dark. So I used this five drawer pivot cabinet from MoMA Design Store. It's got a nice pastel color combination of yellow, red, and green. And just like my desk, it's made out of powder coated steel so I know it'll last for a while. My favorite part though has to be when you open the drawers because unlike a regular one, these ones pivot out from the side, which is really mind boggling. I also threw on a charging station on the top with all the devices I'm testing and playing around with throughout the year. It's a fantastic cabinet, but I wish it was a bit wider and taller. Luckily they do have different colored versions, so I might get this blue, yellow, red version in the future to put right next to it. Plus I still need to put some organizers inside the drawers for all my pencils, rulers, and other office supplies. Once I had this cabinet set up, I moved my whiteboard to the left since it was too close to the bookcase, and I threw up a nice big calendar that I got from Walmart. Now that I had set up all this new furniture, I moved on to the next stage, the lighting. For this, I wanted to go with smart RGB light strips to put on the wall and some form of standing lamp to put in the corner of the room. And after scouring the internet, I found some fantastic products from Govi. The first product I set up was their RGB floor lamp and it honestly wasn't that hard to put together. I placed it next to my glass cabinet of Andrew Mini Collectibles and it looks great. It's minimalistic design sort of camouflages in the corner and it's super powerful, supporting over 16 million colors, gets pretty bright at 1500 lumens, and with their Govi app, you can set a ton of scenes to give you the right look for your room. I also obtained two neon rope lights that are 10 feet long to try to form some cool looking shapes on the wall. I knew I didn't want some random animal or object. Instead, I wanted to outline my desk, so I tried that. And in the end, I went with a straight line in the middle and ending with some random shapes and curves at the end. It did turn out okay, but I just wish I would have spread them out more because I ended up realizing that the power cables are not hidden and are kind of distracting. But since I had already stuck the ropes on the wall with adhesive, there was nothing that I could really do but to just strain out the white power cables. I also linked all the lights to Alexa to be able to change scenes with my voice based on what I was doing. So I created some voice routines for a regular mode, a focus mode, party mode, and one to just turn off all the lights. And it worked out fine. From there, I added my 100,000 subscribers YouTube play button in the center of the room, right above the lights. And to the right, I mounted a grid frame that carries the first Android phone released and the first phone that I've ever owned and started making YouTube videos with, the T-Mobile G1, the smartphone that started it all. From there, I dusted my entire Android mini collection along with the glass cabinet. And then I mounted another smartphone frame from Grid, this time it being the first Google Pixel, which is one of my top favorite Android phones ever released. Finally, for the rest of the room, I ended up cleaning the corner of the office where my printer is, clearing out the closet and turning it into a storage for all of my empty product boxes. I also couldn't have put most of these new furniture together without the help of some power tools from Halto. They sent over this fantastic brushless drill tool set that had everything I needed to measure, screw in and hammer anything I needed in this room. Their 12 volt drill was my favorite tool cause it's got the best looking design that I've ever seen, has an LED screen to let me control the torque, magnetic tips to let me easily handle even the smallest of screws and more. Plus they also have other fantastic products that were really helpful, like this really awesome device that is an air duster on one side, which was perfect for when I needed to clean my keyboard or needed to clear my table from dust, and then a vacuum cleaner on the other side. It came in handy when I needed to clean up my table from all the dust left behind from cutting the wood wall panel. They also have this laser measure pro device that makes it really easy to find any object's distance angle and other lengths by simply pointing a laser at it. And they even sell random useful tools like this electric air pump, which was very helpful for quickly pumping up any tire. I used it to pump up my electric scooters tires since they were flat and it did it in just a few seconds. Overall, Hotto has some amazing quality products that you should definitely check out. They definitely helped me out with this room. And that's my entire home office makeover. 
It's definitely not perfect, but I'd say it's a lot better than what I had before. A huge thanks to my brother David for helping me out, all of the companies that sent over these products, and all of you guys who keep coming back and supporting the channel. Without you guys, I couldn't have done any of this. If you'd like to watch my previous office setup that I made a long time ago to see where I came from, tap this video. Just be aware that it's not the best video since it's really old. Thanks for watching till the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!